Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tuesday edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. Dow's down 242 at 33,807. I'm going to take just a moment to do this one at a time because tomorrow I have my webinar and one of the things that we'll be talking about is how do you use some of these technical tools? I mean, what, you know... It's kind of a plethora of stuff I've got here. I could go to, actually, why did I do that now? Look, I'll go to the naked chart. Let me just move this away. Uh, pick out this one right here that's sitting behind. Pick it out right there. And I'll drag this down. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> so what do we have here? And this is what I'll be going through in great detail tomorrow. Just to show you some of the techniques, what we're using in the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar, merely count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them, <clears throat> alphabetize them, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uppercase on the way up. But you never get an H. That's the most important thing. But at the fourth highest peak, peak D, other things can happen. Let me just get this out of the way, remove that. All right. <clears throat> that was an up arrow. I didn't update this. So... The Dow goes to peak A. Remember, the bar, if this bar had a very big, strong move up, but still underneath that last um, high, you could, the, the bar of the March the, was that the 13th? I should know it by now. March the 15th. Um, you can't call that A. You have to make a trough. You have to make a higher low to start your wave count. So here it goes. It's a very simple technique. All I do is alphabetize. That's all you need to do is know your A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Never forget when I started doing this way back 20-something years ago here at TFNN. We had Greg in the den, and Greg, uh, I commented once, I said, uh, we could go to a D, but we could also go to an E. And then Greg said, oh, man, I just finally learned my A, B, C, D, and now you're adding a, a E? Well, it turns out you can go E, F, N, G. So look at this. Now, one of the things I'll be talking about tomorrow night is when you put a down arrow for a cell signal and when is it upgraded to a cell mode? That's number one. Number two is I did have a, a down arrow, but then I took it away because I said, you know what? With the nine period exponential moving so moving so much above the 14 still at that peak E, you can get a pullback. And if that pullback holds with the green still above the 14, that nine period moving average holding above the black moving average, that says you can go to the next highest peak. Oh, wait, I've skipped something. Sorry, that's an E. This is a D right here. I was talking at the same time. And that just says that I took away, it's very seldom that I do that, but if you have not got the crossover, I have to give it the benefit of the doubt. Now there's a chance I'll still put a red uh, plus sign. I always put a plus sign above a D, E, and F because that's where other things can happen. But I can't put the down arrow yet, because this has to close sharply lower uh, the, I, I, for a cell signal to be upgraded to a cell mode. You'd have to see this nine period moving average move sharply below the 14, and it would take about another 500 points to do that, maybe 400 points. <clears throat> so in the meantime, back at the range, that says there's a warning here. And I, I, I can do this, and I, now I can add the other things. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we're looking for two, two outer points that are resistance for a trend line, preferably three. And then what I do is I draw in a little narrow three sixteenths of an inch or whatever it is. <clears throat> it's not very mathematical, but it's about three sixteenths of an inch or even less. Um, and I draw pink on the bottom and green on the top, and that just says very simply, if the, what you're following has made these points of contact that become resistance, <clears throat> this area here is the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Well, if you're going to do that, you need to do it on the upside as well. Normally off a low, 
when you're drawing off to that, the lows that come in place, usually it's too sharp from the low to the arch formation following low to get a trend line that's reasonable. In this case, it's actually very good because it comes in almost, no, I wouldn't say perfectly, but I'm going to say almost perfectly if there's such a thing because perfectly is perfectly. How can you be almost perfectly? Well, it's almost perfect. So this is the area that we're looking at for key support. So I like to go one step at a time. And uh, we have shorted the S&P again. We did that right there at that peak. The very next day we, we shorted, sorry, this is the Dow. I'm, I, I, we have short the S&P. So let me just do this. This is going to be your support area. So this is green. And this is going to be pink. So the day is young. Anything can happen. I mean, we've got bad news now. The Dow's down almost 300 points. It's either speed or it's going to be time that's going to rotate to get this nine period moving average negative. Look at the S&P. Now, I'm taking a little time on all this. I did have a question I'm going to go to in a moment for Jason and others. But I wanted to do this because it's so important. This is such a critical moment in the uh, overall spectrum on the shorter term trend because you've also got the Fed coming out tomorrow. My suspicion is that the Fed is going to say, let's test to see if we can say something a little bit more negative to see how the market holds. I, I, I got a feeling that it's not going to be just smooth sailing and all of a sudden the, the market turns around and it screams to the upside from here. I got, I'm, this is just a feeling. This is not based on any technical analysis because it's the Fed. Anything, I don't know the data they're looking at. But in the Chapman Wave methodology, when you get to a G, in this case, it could be a G slash A. It just doesn't look right now that you're going to start a brand new buy mode to go to four peaks higher. I think this is a G and it pulls back. And then we will start some kind of a, um, uh, a test of strength. So what I do is I like to do this. I take out a highs and I join them up. Yeah, you've got a whole sequence of them. Then I do the inside track repellent zone right there. I'll show these again tomorrow in the webinar just to explain what I'm doing. Because as I say, the days, yeah, we could get a turn around later today. We've seen that before. I think it's going to be hard to do, but that's not the point. The point is that you've got to do what you've got in front of you. And right now, this is what I've been looking at. So that's the uh, resistance at this peak G right here with a doji candle, especially. It is so rare that you actually do get these major turns at in do a tiny little plus sign doji. It's called the doji candle where the open and close is about the same. But in this case, we want tiny little wicks to the upside and downside. And that's just saying to me, this is a moment to be very, very careful. That's all. It's nothing more than that. And I'm going to join these lines right here. And I'll, so I can give you everything that you need to know uh, for at least this moment as we've flipped to the downside. So we did this morning go short the S&P um, via one of, the, one of the, um ETFs. And the idea is that if we timed it correctly, and you never know, I mean, we timed it just off the, the low of the day. Um, remember, it's reverse. It's going to be going up when the market goes down. Um, at least we've got a cushion. If the Fed comes out with something, all we need to do is put in our stop and say, OK, well, that's our stop and we're prepared to deal with that. Meantime, back to the ranch. Here's your, I'll give you the levels right now as we go into the break. This is the level of support. Now we're looking at for the um, daily chart of the S&P, and that says that the area between, well, it depends where it comes in, but the area between 4,110 and 4,092 is going to be key support. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down three. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So we're looking at the uh, E-mini down 35 at 4,180. So what I want you to show you again, I've got this is the continuous contract. The reason why I have it, I can have it in all time frames and it goes back forever. If I just do the futures, I don't get the futures long enough. So this is uh, the daily chart. What I will be assessing this evening going into tomorrow's close is what happened at this doji candle peak D, and that was on April the 18th at 41.9825. Remember, the tra uh, this travels in 25 uh, cent increments, and it is the futures. It's at 41.48, and the actual futures are at 41.48. So the uh, for, for a long time, it stays exactly the same. And then it starts, as you're getting to the next month, it gets closer. It, it, there's a big divergence. Sometimes even eight points difference between the cash and the futures. But that's not the issue here. So what I'll be doing is, you see this vertical, this is the MACD. This is the nine-period moving average over the 14. This is the stochastic flat in the 80s. I said, that's good. On balance volume was good. Made a little peak right at the top. And then it pulled back. And then you had this, it went pulled back to the 200 period moving average. I'll be talking about the importance. This, this quarter coming up, the second quarter, the 200 period moving average is going to become even more important than it ever has in many of the charts. I'll be assessing yesterday's doji candle close at a potential peak E. I say potential, I have to wait. It's a daily chart. I can't talk about it as if it's, it's made a peak E. Anything can happen. You could have a rumor come out all of a sudden about the Fed. I, my thinking right here, just as we stand, is that the full assessment of what the Fed says at the end of the Fed speak, maybe by about um, 3 o'clock or so, is that there's just too many questions. Nothing's as clear as we thought it would be a couple of days ago. It's not the quarter point. It's other things that they're going to talk about. I've mentioned this before. The home builders are spectacular. The uh, there's just there's so many conflicts here that I, I'm not sure if I would not like to be a Fed decision maker right here. So I did have a down arrow here, but this is at the point where I look back and I say, okay, this is one of the few times that I'm going back. You remember, your idea here is to keep this as clean as possible. So at this particular point, I want to make a change to say, hey, I didn't get a sell. I had a sell signal, but it got negated by a, a new high. So that plus that down arrow, sometimes what I do is I keep the down arrow 
and I put in an inverted V-shaped pattern, and that says, that's your top. I don't know if I can do Oh, now I'll put it in. But that's what I would put there, and that says, that's your, it's like residual high and an internal high. Um, uh, no, internal high and then a residual high. And what we were looking at here is within the context of what happens next. That's all that ma matters. I'll keep it in for now. Um, but now it's accelerated down. Now the Dow's down 315. The S&P's down at 38. Not bad, actually. The S&P's holding a little bit better. So this is just a process. And now look at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone from the weekly. Yes, for two weeks, uh, three weeks, actually, it's uh, four weeks. It's gone above this green trend line. It's closed there twice already above. No, once it closed. This week it went higher, now it's pulled back. So this is a gray peak A and a gray peak B. A gray because we aren't really sure yet whether there's a new buy signal because the stochastic is almost at 80%. The MACD is good, 9 is good, but uh, you need to go above the previous highs. That's the high there, that peak D. So all I'm saying is, this is a process, and the process said to me, I almost did not do it. And then at the last moment, I said, everything you've been doing since during the day yesterday, in the evening, early this morning, said there should be a pullback here. You've got a peak G in the S&P. There's no other way to count it. At a peak G, other things can happen. Um, even though there's a chance it could be an A, there's a much greater chance that it's a peak G if there's a lower high today, especially if it's a sharp move down. So that's the reason. So now I can put in that we are short, and we'll have a reasonable stop. I mean, I've got a stop as it is. We've written it in, so we're short right here, and we'll deal with that. And now what I want you to talk about is just I need to go to – I want to do a couple of things here. One is I had a question from Jason about E. E is – I always love to do these letters. And uh, when I do the letters, the alphabet letters, every once in a while, I just say, you know what? It's just time to do A, then B, then C, D, E, F, etc. And sometimes they're missing because the, uh, they haven't changed them in the, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the format because they used up the letter. No one's acclaimed the, the, a new letter or replaced the letter. So in this case, we've got E, which is um, the daily E, many, I think... SPS, uh, he said that it was, let me just double check this now. Uh, oh, am I going to find it? Yeah. Hi, Basil. Can you look at both EQNR, Norway, and E, which is Italy, on the show for longs? E is Italy? I thought I had IW. Oh, they're both European uh, oil, oil, oil companies. Uh, trading at a discount valuation-wise to the U.S. oil companies. Not not much is going on, either short-term charts, but both seem to have held a high consolidation from uh, their 2020 to 2021 lows. That's Jason. So, Jason, let me just do this real quickly here. I've got peak A, peak B, peak C, and there's your D. Remember that Chapman Wave methodology says a buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode. If the technical is confirmed, that should take you to at least a peak D, the fourth highest peak. Then other things can happen. Well, it did. Had a little double top. Look at that high there. And look at this high retest there with much weaker technicals. Sharp move down today. Uh, weekly is A, B, C, D. Let me just put that in. It's easy enough to set. Let me show you how I do it. Identify the lowest low bar. Start your wave count. A, B, C, and D. And it gets a down arrow because it closed sharply below the 914 9 crossover with all the other technicals weak. And that says, right, you're in a sell signal. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that would have been a sell mode upgrade. I would still put it in the ca category of sell mo mode upgrade. Monthly chart is peak. Hey, I may as well do it. This is what I'll be doing tomorrow evening to show you the power of these notations and the power of some of these technical tools that can really tell you whether or not the trend on a shorter term level, on a longer term level, what is the trend doing? So this does have to go to a, a sell signal, then a sell mode with a fabulous retracement. Where is it now? When the shorter term, this could be a, a buy signal in the monthly chart in an overall sell mode. So it's a complicated thing. But I would look at this and I'd say, wait until the 200 period moving average of 28.10, you're at 28.89. 
If that gets tested and it doesn't find support there, then you possibly could see a dreaded H in the weekly chart. This is just telling us, I haven't gotten to crude oil, I'll get there right now, that crude oil, and someone had asked me the other day about the SCO, and I said, I'm just not sure about it, but as a starter position, maybe you could nibble on it, but uh, you have to really wait for the night period to cross over what it has, and now you're in leg C, this is SCO, which is the uh, pro shares, ultra short, uh, crude. So this is what we're looking at right here. And this is or overall, even though there were fantastic earnings from Microsoft and a couple of the others, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, there are just a handful of stocks that are really dragging the markets up. And I think you can see that. So let me just go back to um, what the question was, E. So I agree. The next one was uh, E Q N R E Q N R. I think if I looked at it, it did the same thing. Yes. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So, um, yeah, EQ, EQ, and all. I did some work on it. It's gone to that instant restart low that was made back on the 18th of uh, February of 2022, 26.78. And that's suggesting that it's made an arch formation with the second peak D right there. And now it's come back down. Uh, it seems to me that the area, the 26 to 25 area is going to be critical support. So let's look at it together. Give me a yell if you see it get there. And we'll see if that's going to be a, a, a basis of, of some kind of uh, 
at least a support level to consider. Now, the other thing that I want you to do is, yeah, I, I like the fact, I do this periodically, I haven't done it for ages. If you are, have a particular product that you use all the time, it's kind of nice to let that product pay for itself. So yesterday, it was a little too soon for me, but that has been my thinking for a little while. And my thinking was that in the context of uh, Uber, which I told you I took on Friday and then through, through the weekend, um, that probably that, uh, that surge charge that they had, I mean, this is extreme. It went over, over the $32 that I was quoted just before landing, and then it went to uh, 48 and then it went to 60 something, which I thought I had booked. It turns out it was 80 something that I had booked. Um, and of course, with the tip and everything, it was almost 100 bucks there. Um, this is so I, I said to myself, yesterday I almost did it, and I thought maybe that's a little too soon. I was going to say, I know earnings are coming out. How about we, we buy some Uber? Never did. And look at this. Uber yesterday, before the opening, the 31 area was the close on Friday. Monday, it uh, opens sharply higher, screens up to 33. Today, it gaps up again, and it's up at the 35.24 high today. is now at 34.97. That's a good way to do things. I, I, you know, i gotta, I got to remind myself that this is a, a nice way to do it. Uh, I didn't do it though, but that will be a nice way to do it. Let Uber pay for its uh, for its own uh, uh, experience and uh, surge of uh, pricing. Meantime, back at the ranch, this is a brand new A because it made a lower low going to that uh, into the 29s. Uh, five point gain. I mean, that's really very very nice. It's about what a 14, 15 percent uh, rallies from the lows. Um, so it's something to look at. But now this is what I wanted to show you. The stocks that soared, and this is what I was trying to articulate yesterday, and I was saying that if there is a sell-off to the downside that is very sharp market-wise, with these stocks having gone over the last week spectacularly higher, they are in play because to get Microsoft back down to the 270s, 35 points from where it is right now, 305, Wow, this is going to have to be a way more serious decline. And I don't think I can see that. And that's telling me that in the webinar I'm going to do tomorrow, there are things that I need to focus on, like the XLK. What is that telling me? The S&P Select Tech Spider Fund pulling back sharply today from a potential peak F uh, failure pattern. We'll see. It's a leg G slash C in the weekly chart. But it is important because this is your average of the of the sector, in other words, you've got a handful of really spectacular stocks. Meta, etc. Meta is doing what? Is it giving back any today? Meta is trading at. Uh, it made a higher high today. Leg E. Um, it went all the way to 244.92. So for it to come back and even get back, even to full some of the gap or to go to the last high in the 223 area. Um, there's a lot that's going to happen. That's why I, I, I hesitated and then I said, no, all your technicals are saying there should be a, a sharp pull in, a short, sharp pullback coming either today or even after the Fed speak tomorrow. You've got to get in position because if it starts to move and you don't really want to send out to subscribers an intraday update, do it now. So we, we've got our, our short position. Uh, of, of course, it's up, you know, what, nearly 4 percent or something like that. But that's not the issue. We've got a stock that was a spectacular winner, and it's down 10% today. I don't know why I forgot that there were earnings coming out today. I, I used for a long time now. I've been typing it in. Um, for some reason, I overlooked this particular one, and uh, we are still long from lower down. It's had a spectacular move. We've taken little bits off, but we did get a trading position yesterday, which did extremely well intraday. Today, you got taken out for a tiny loss. Thank goodness that we had stops in place. But most importantly, what we're looking at here is that if you've got a handful of stocks like a, a Facebook or Meta, but and let me say, I think Google was actually a bit weak, and it's weak today again. Uh, it's down 276. Uh, Amazon was not doing all that well. Amazon right now is trading AMZN. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's up today, $1.34 at 103.42, but it has made a peak F top. It's actually in a sell signal, 
But the green, nine green moving average is still over the 14, so that means it could be changed. So I have to just make this a red <clears throat> plus sign to say we're in the process of maybe uh, uh, upgrading, but we haven't done it yet. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> and the weekly chart just stuck in the rectangle formation. Talk about the rectangle formation. Look at this, TLT. Look at that. I drew in the midpoint right here. We haven't closed under it. Uh, it's trading at uh, way back in April 13th. Mike called and I said at 10, 10 to 11, and I typed in at 106s. I said I wouldn't be surprised if when we get oh that's why I did that. Why did I move that? It was at the end of the rectangle. I said I wouldn't be surprised if we get to this date right here. Let me get back to that. This date right. That's why it was okay right here, and that was. Uh, the, May, the week of May the 26th, if we're still saying TLT at 106, because I think it's just stuck in this range, and we're going to be following it closely. But it is, you can see, the, the daily went under the rectangle for a day, and now it's closed above, a nice move up today, up 2.38 days. That has to do with yields. So um, most importantly right now, and the reason why we've actually maintained quite a high level of cash is that I use the SMHs. I'll talk about that tomorrow. SMH is you can't have one or two stocks like an NVIDIA. So uh, moving to the upside without the group, or at least a good portion of the semiconductors skyrocketing high, and they've just stalled at this particular level. That to me is a market indicator to say, got to be a little careful here. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to look at here was I did that, I did that. Now let me go back to the question. I wanted to see if this question is still pertinent. Uh, yeah, uh, Rochelle says Merck. I'm not sure. I just saw the symbol. So Merck um, is trading at a new all-time high. And that's the selectivity of this. And I, uh, Big Pharma, I've been saying that the PPH, we do not have this as something we've been focusing on. I haven't actually put the position in yet because that's a broader. This is the overall Van Eck pharmaceutical ETF uh, trading down $0.03 today at 7927 there's a pattern that I call the falling X formation. It means you, you go to a peak D, E, or F, and you start to come down. You make higher, high, lower highs and much lower lows. Then suddenly it stalls and it turns around. Could this be a cup formation saying that this is still in favor? GSK, was it GSK someone mentioned? Yes, GSK is. Uh, GSK. PLC, yeah, isn't this Glaxo? Yeah, glad so. There are a couple of stocks that are not doing well. I'll be doing. I'll be doing a little bit more of the pharmaceuticals. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions are preparing for tomorrow's webinar. It should be an exciting webinar. There's a lot to look at. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com.
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So let me just show you this. This is part of the Chamway methodology. Um, the low in the E-mini, the S&P E-mini, March contract, uh, June contract, sorry, is um, 4131.75. That was at 510 uh, in the morning of the 28th of April. It screamed all the way to the high of 420. Was that 08 or something? 40? Let me see if I can get it right. 4205. Didn't realize, round number high. At a peak D, and then it are many, many different peaks, but this final one is at peak D, and then it comes down. I drew this in this morning as I was starting my show, and I said, wow, I've got to go back to see where the base level is. And I drew in a left side, right side price time match. That's called bar symmetry from the low that was made right here. Uh, let me just give you that exact figure. It was at uh, 9.30. On the first, that's yesterday at 41, uh, 81.50. I need to move this over one more bar. So, and then I drew in a chap wave inside wedge target resistance line. I had no idea where it would go because I was it, it was in the middle of my show. I drew it in over, over there. So I put it in and I said that I just, I didn't know what the measurement was. I just knew that this was my plumb line. And then, and I put in. I, I had didn't have a chance. I, I normally put in an X. So we're talking about. I, I'm not going to count the bars. These are 10-minute bars. But you can believe me. They're about. Uh, there's way over 200 bars, right? 200 10-minute bars. Look what it did. It was a few bars early, and it went right to the low so far today. 41, 24.25. Here's your support level. Chapman wave inside wedge target support line. It hit it, then broke it. It hit it just in exactly the time period that I say, but it went below that. So now it's a little oversold, but oversold doesn't mean to say, look, the stochastic's at 6.15, 5 uh, All the All the, the books on, on technical now say over 80% is overbought, under 20% is oversold. Well, over means that it's over a level that it should come back again. I don't like to do that at all. I like to say it is in the the deep selling area or the deep buying area when it's over 80%. And that's where we are. And now you have to go from a shorter time frame. I don't want to do the five minute yet, but I got the one minute and says it's attempting, but the on balance volume is still very weak. Price is still very weak. All right. I wanted to just quickly do that. Now the things that I want to do, I had a question about Zion. This is Zion Bank, I believe. Zion, uh, Z-I-O-N. Uh, oh, yeah, it's the same pattern we just looked at. So these patterns repeat, they fractals of human nature, therefore the time frame doesn't matter because you're going to repeat the same patterns over and over and over again. So here we are, we've got this left side, right side, oops, it's adjusted exactly right there. And we're going to go to the right and we put it in. There it is. It's a daylight. So this is the uh, Zion. I'd be really careful here. I, I don't know what your position is. If the question is about Zion, I would just say this is really ugly action. It's absolutely imperative that it holds 
the 23 to 22 support level. If it closes under 21, oh, then it's even, it's now almost at the level that it was at in the monthly chart, March of 2020, when it made that low before going to peak A, B, C, D, E, the peak E in February of 2022, and then it's come down in a shorter time frame. Oh, I'd be really careful about this. And the other one was KRE. Well, KRE is the, um, this is the S&P regional banking ETF. Ugly. Oh, it's already done exactly what I was talking about with Zion. It's taken out the base of the rectangle, which made a lowercase h, which goes to a lowercase m. Yuck. Uh, I don't know if that's an appropriate thing to talk about a bank. Yuck. Blech. That's probably more important. Uh, this is not good at all. One of the reasons why we've stayed away from the bank stocks, remember Bank of America, we've had every year for the past about seven years, really good profits to get out of it, then wait and wait and wait, get back in this year, just stepped aside, at least not this year. I'd say from the, the, uh, three, about the third quarter of last year, we, we got out and now we, we, we're just watching it. I, I'm, this is what worries me, and that's why I'm saying the Fed might not make it easy at this particular point. Um, another thing I needed to talk about was, where was the question? Oh, I saw it, I saw it, I wrote it, I wrote it. Oh, GDX. So the GDX, the gold miners, look how it's nicely it's held. But holding nicely means that it's not finding tremendous energy for an upside move. But it's also not finding energy for a downside move, so it's stuck. So what I like to do is to say, within the context of this cup formation, I have to also add, uh, I'll talk about these patterns tomorrow, how you can use them, why they're so important, how we've used them, and we are quite prepared to see them broken, but we have parameters and we have, uh, I always put in very tight stops, not prepared to be messed around uh, by the chart, I might have an analysis, but the chart might have its own independent thinking. I wonder why. So here it is. So look at the stochastics at 18%. The MACD is negative. The nine-period moving average has held so far. It was so close. If it was a weak session today, we'd have pink, but it's green. And that says it's still internal support. The um, stochastic at 18% is, is, is weak. It can go weaker. But this is where, if it's going to rally, it's going to get to 20%, 21% within another two days. This is going to be really important. The on-balance volume is pretty good. Relative strength at about 53, I'm eyeing it, is, is really quite good. And the weekly chart is good. So I don't, and the reason why uh, I've been waiting for a little bit more of a drop in the GDX and say we've got to think independently. How many, how many times over the last year or more have I been saying, think of your... Um, Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, and Vixie independently. In other words, it used to be where, where the dollar came, went up, gold would go down. When the dollar went down, gold would go. Those relationships now are, are, are not perfunct. They're not, they're not out of, they're just out of the realm at the moment. For And this might, might change within the next three months or so. Look at the VIX index. The VIX index today is trading up very sharply. Now it's at 19.21. We was trading in the 15s the other day. I said, just what do you look for? You look for the, the VIX index if it rallies sharply and then closes in the 20s or 19.50, I think I said, but in the 20s with a very strong triple digit down move in the Dow and a more than minus 65 in the S&P, then you've got to take it seriously. And it's in the area that this is kind of where you'd expect that if I did the same technique that I used on the upside for the, for the S&P, and I said, look, this is your trend line right here. We went to the Chapwave inside track, the upper part of the support level. It broke it before, now it's there, and that's green. So that just says, using this particular technique, it says if the VIX index in the next week starts to trade under 15, that's a very negative for the VIX index and very positive for the market. But at this particular point, with the MACD turning positive, stochastic bouncing to the 24% level, and the nine period moving very was very ugly, but now it's turning up. If the if the nine goes over the 14 to turn green, this selling pressure could last a lot longer. So I'm just going one step at a time, and I'm saying these are the things we're looking at. Here's your resistance level. There's a trend line resistance in the VIX index. Breaks that. 
you've got to take it very seriously. Starts to trade in the 20s, that means we are going to be going down. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dallas Dallas 460. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So two questions. One is Meta Platforms, is it, still a, is it a buy? Yes, it is a buy, but not here. I, I love the fact that the monthly chart has gone all the way from the low that was made in the, in the 88 area to where it is right now at 244.92 today as a high in a single leg A. And that just says be careful because there could be a pullback to the 218 to 194 area. If this is going to be a deeper correction, I would, what I, what were, so I'm saying yes, but you would, I would stagger my, my entry points and I'll talk about it maybe tomorrow or, or Thursday where I would do it. I wouldn't do it right here. Because I, I do not want to have a 15% uh, risk on something like uh, buying at a recovery high. And, and even if it's a started positions, I do want to pull back and then we can start uh, maybe looking at it in a different way. And the other question was, what would you like right now? What would I like? I would like this concerted down move that we're seeing intraday to continue. Look, we're, as I'm talking, I drew this in live and here we are. We're right at this key support level. I'd like to break it. I'd like the, the Dow to try to test one more time the low 33,000s, maybe even 33,000, and then start fresh for the next big move up. That's what I would like. 
<laughs> what I would like, the market doesn't even blink, it doesn't even know, it couldn't care. So that's what I'm saying right now. I would like this rectangle formation in, in the in the Dow. The S and P is the same thing. There's nothing different here. The S and P, the S and P. Oh, I haven't got it on this chart. I drew it in the other one. Uh, I'll have to redraw it. And now it's starting to look a little messy. So I'm going to have to clean it up. I don't like to clean it up until I've really got all the picture. Everyone, I feel that people understand what we're looking at. So this is it. We're at the support level right now that we're looking at. A little differently to the Dow, but this is the first support. So. Uh, by the end of the day, if the selling intensity doesn't have a relief rally that holds, so the Dow becomes only, instead of down 500, maybe down 235 after 230 this afternoon, that'll be not bad active. If the selling continues, 